welcome back. So in this lecture, we are going to set up the logic for the fader. So the fader is going to be an automatic way to fade between two screens, OK? And it also will allow you to set some artistic design choices as well. So let's jump over into Unity and get this started. All righty. So here we are inside of Unity. So the thing that we need to do is add another image. And in this case, we just want a single image. And again, I'm going to stretch it by holding down Control, Shift, and Alt, and hitting the Anchor button up here, and just expanding it so that it fills the entire screen. And for this particular case, I'm going to just set it to a black. Not totally black, but dark enough to feel like it's fading out to black kind of thing. I don't want to go full, full dark, you know what I mean? Um, it's always good to uh, not make it fully black. All right, so I'm going to rename that to Fader. OK, so now in our UI system, the UI system is basically going to control this fader. So it's going to fade it up and fade it down. And it's actually quite simple. Unity provides us some functions, some built in functions that automatically do this for us. So I just want to implement that functionality into the UI system. All right, so we're going to pop over in the UI system there. OK, and what I need to do is create a property that is the fader. So I need to allow someone to assign the, the fader UI element to this particular script. Now we could automatically find it. Oops, I forgot to capitalize that. We could automatically find it, but let's just let someone assign it because I don't want to do some more searching around in, in the start function, right? It'll, it'll be easier this way. So we'll just call this the fader properties. All right, and these headers just help you clean up your your inspector editors. All right, it just helps kind of componentize the properties. It makes it easier for the end user or people who are using your component to figure out what the properties do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just say public image. So I want an image, and in this case, I need to in order to do that, I need to include the Unity engine dot UI namespace. So I'm going to say public image <clears throat> m fader. OK, perfect. And with that, we're pretty good to go. The, the next two things is I want to set in some values so that the end user can actually change the amount of time it takes to fade in and out. So I'm going to say fade duration. Or actually, we'll say fade in duration like so. We'll, we'll initialize it to a value of 1, so it takes 1 second to fade in. Then we're going to say float m fade out duration okay, is equal to 1f. And I want to name that properly, so float, not flayout. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go and get this taken care of. So in the start function, what I want to do is I first want to make sure that we have the fader. So I'm going to say if m fader, then we're cool. So we have it. So what I want to do is if it's off, right, because it might be turned off, maybe someone who is like a designer is working on the UI for your game or, or your app, and they accidentally left the game object off, I want to turn it on. So I want to say m fader dot game object dot set active to true, just so we know that it's going to be turned back on. OK? So that basically initializes the fader. And then we just need two public functions okay, in here. So I'm just going to insert them right here. So we're going to say public void fade in. All right. And then we're going to say public void fade out, like so. Cool. All right. So in each of these, what we want to do is we want to say if m fader, because we don't want to throw any sort of null reference exceptions. So we're going to check to make sure we have it. It could have got deleted somehow at some point. So we need to check. OK. So if that's true, then we're going to say m fader dot crossfade alpha. All right, and you can see the arguments for this particular built-in function. We have an alpha value, a duration, and an ignore time scale. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to say if I fade in, 
I want to basically make this fader disappear. So I'm going to set it to zero in the alpha so it's fully transparent. And then I want to pull in that fade dur in duration. And then I want to say false for the ignore time scale because I do want it to adhere to the current time scale of the game. Okay. So let's copy this. And we're going to say crossfade alpha. And when we fade out, I want this to be fully opaque. And I want to use that M fade out duration, like so. <clears throat> All right. So there we go. We now have the ability to fade in and out between the screens. OK. And so basically, all we need to do now is we can just call fade in right here. So basically, now the UI will just fade in. OK, because we're going to leave this set to true. And by default, the fader is going to be fully black. So when this thing starts, it's going to fade in, show you the screen. And then we're going to utilize an animator to animate the transitions between all the screens. So this is, think of it as a global fader. When we, when we leave, enter, or leave this particular level, it'll fade in, fade out. Uh, it's really nice. It's a nice effect. So let's actually assign it now. Very cool. And the last thing we actually need to do, OK, is turn off Raycast Target, because I don't want this particular image to block the Raycasts from the mouse when I'm hitting buttons. If this is, because currently, this is at the bottom, OK, of this hierarchy here. So it's the last child in this hierarchy. So that means that it is sitting on top of all the other UI. And that's why we can't see the other screens, right? And so if we have this Raycast target on and I click, this particular fader image will block that Raycast and it won't hit the buttons. So that's why we turn off the Raycast. So now the Raycast just goes through this particular fader. All right. So now we are ready to go. That was super easy. And now we have global fading working. Super awesome. OK, so I'm going to leave you guys there. And in the next lesson, we are going to set up the animator. And we're going to start to get these guys to transition between one another. We're almost there. So hang in there. And I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thanks so much.